life and real future, Tom and Don are talking real money. In a world where stock markets plummet, one man, okay, two, have the answer to your questions and the means by which to make it all better. This is Talking Real Money. Hi, everybody. Doing my uh, trailer announcer voice. In a world where Tom Cock always wears a tie. <laughs> I'm not, I, you did your trailer announcer. I'm going to do my trailer trash announcer. Oh, well, one. don't no. you do that all the time? Well, look, look at the neighborhood I live in. You could understand yeah. why. Of course. Um, we, we are starting the show off with uh, a bit of lightness because our <laughs> Saturday show and Monday podcast, was a, we, we got criticized. Yeah. We did for being a little too heavy at the beginning, but I mean, it's so hard because I, I don't want to make light of, of, you know, the thing in Europe, you know, that thing. Yeah. It's bad. I don't want to make light of that at all because it's horrible. I mean, it's really, really awful. And, and it has caused stock markets around the globe to do this thing. Over and over and over and yes. over again. And the podcast, they can't see that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if you're listening to the podcast, my hand was moving up and down like a chart. There, thank you. Like a chart. Mm -hmm. It was doing chart things. Yeah, see, I'm thinking it's a video only, but no, it's a video and it's an audio. So we have to- I think it's actually both. the other way. It's an audio and it's and a video. And a video. <laughs> okay. More honest, all right, all right. Let's, let's just get this out of the way before <laughs> oh, we go into again? the topic. All right. Tom's Tom, complaining. Yeah. Tom, go ahead. Vent your spleen. Uh, I, I, it, Vent again, it. it's it should be your spleen that's on display here because yours is the <laughs> one that gets gets hacked at to do this every week. Uh, guys, yeah. come on, please. No, in all seriousness, no, we are at like eight hundred and forty subscribers. That's not eight hundred forty thousand. That's yeah. eight hundred forty. Like, yeah. it's not a lot of people. Yeah, and, 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 then, we, those, and then we look and we look and we see these <laughs> these twenty something idiots who know nothing about I know, money I know. Oh. they have no experience yet and they get like a million subscribers how to make the easy money easy money that's what we need to talk about this <sighs> show is about stocks. how to lose the easy money lose it fast all right so let's talk about the topic at hand yes the topic at we hand have is seen a said. very volatile market and mm -hmm. i think right now as we record this you know, we're back in, in S and P 500 correction territory. We are mm -hmm. not in a full fledged bear market. No, but we're that takes in correction 20%. territory. That's right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, last week we saw correction territory and then it recovered. Yep. So we don't we're know. Back. I don't know. By the time you see this, who knows? It's all over though, all over the flipping place. It so, is. uh, we don't know where it's going to go. We don't know where it's going to end up, but what should you do and I know you're dying to do something. So that's why we're, we're starting off this way. What should you be doing right now, ladies and gentlemen, in reaction to the incredible stability? What should you do when markets fall? And so many of you already know this because I talked to so many of you and you already know that nothing. Okay. Excuse me a minute. I could interrupt him again. You talk to, you think you talk to so many, but you don't talk to a fraction of the people who actually well, listen. Well, that's true. That's, that's true. now the people yeah, who watch. Yeah. You probably talk to all of them. I call them every day. Please watch my video. Come <laughs> on. What else you got to do? I got this new series on Netflix about the Vikings. Nah, this is way more interesting. Come on. Our video is far more interesting oh, than Vikings. I'm with this work. We, I'm halfway to Valhalla. Come on, man. We anyway. just sit here. We, instead of there's no blood <laughs> or guts, we just plunder each other's egos. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> cut that, cut that. So, I, okay. So, but what are the things actually that you can control in this situation? <laughs> that was the question. Thank you. I mean, there's so little because there's nothing you could do about stock yeah. markets. There's nothing, well, unless you're like really have a lot of money, you could buy something, I guess, and push the price up. <laughs> there's really nothing you can do about bond markets. There's very little you can do about interest rates. And probably even though you may give some sort of charitable contribution, the humanitarian need in, in uh, Ukraine is greater than any one individual can probably fix very easily either. Uh, okay, except for the Jeff or whatever. Uh, there, there are people that could really help, but 
So there's not a lot oh, you can do about Jeff. all that. I was yeah. going, who's the Jeff? Not Jefferson Davis. He's dead. <laughs> Jefferson Not Davis. Jefferson Airplane. He's going to run in with a, a with a new government, Jefferson Davis. Uh, Thomas so, Jefferson? No, he's gone. Uh, actually, he'd be helpful at this moment, too. George but, Jefferson? The, no, that series was canceled. Oh, please. Uh, okay, get one more Jefferson, dude. That's all you get. What is it? What's uh, going to no, be? No, I'm not doing it. I'm all not, right. No, okay, I just so annoy you. What are the things you can actually control? Well, number one. The thing, and this is so important because you pointed this out. We were talking about this topic uh, prior to the podcast. You all believe that your risk tolerance is off the charts when stocks are going up. Mm-hmm. Oh, I feel great. I don't worry about risk. I Volatility means oh, nothing to I me. Wanna, I don't even want any of those stupid bonds. Just put me 100% in yeah. stocks. I feel good about the stock market. No, no, not now. Until, yeah, until they royal, <laughs> until they fall, until we go into oh, a correction. Um, so this is a good time to know your risk tolerance. And you know, regular listeners, that we have a thing called the risk quiz. This is the time to take the risk quiz, right? Yeah, this is actually a really, really good point, Tom. This, the best time to measure your risk tolerance is when you're afraid. When you're concerned, when you are negatively emotional, it is not when you're ecstatic, when you're feeling good, when you're elated, when you're feeling all kinds of positive feelings about money, because you are going to change your answers based on how you feel. And we believe, and again, let me just do this. We, we don't get anything from risk quizzes. They're free. We just give them away. Uh, we don't call you. We don't try to sell you anything. It's you, none of that. This is really easy. You just go to talkingrealmoney.com and click on the risk quiz, and take it and take it every couple of years. Take it regularly just to see how your risk tolerance fluctuates. It doesn't cost anything. Might as well do it. But go take it right now in a, in a market like this, because this is going to give you the best idea of what kind of portfolio you need to build. And Tom, Based on people's risk tolerance, how do they know what to put where? In terms of how much risk and Stocks less risk? Stocks and bonds. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this determine is, all this? Well, that's the harder part, right? I mean, then it becomes a matter of your need for return, your ability to take risk, and how soon until you need the money. But my number two on the control list was once you've taken the risk quiz, once you've sort of developed that plan, you can control what your stock to bond ratio is. Mm-hmm. That's something that you can do, whether you're doing this on your own, you have an advisor, whatever it is, you can control that. You can't control the prices of those assets, but you can control your asset allocation. Number three, and this is very important and is proving important even this year when things have been eh, ugly, not horrible, be diversified. You can control how much diversification you actually have, not just the standard and poor's 500, not just U.S. stocks, but international stocks, international small stocks, international value stocks. How about emerging markets? Ooh, doesn't that include Russia? All of those things should be in your portfolio, but you can make that control. And here's the fourth one, Don, and this is one you have preached for low these I do. I dare say it. 30 Many, plus years, 30, four, four, 35, <laughs> too 35, long. All these years. You, 88, yeah, 34. You can control. Here's one easy way for you to make more money. You can control the types of products that you use to invest. If you use low cost portfolios, low cost index funds, or exchange traded funds, well, that's something you could control. And you can do it pretty easily in today's world, whether you're doing it on your own or having someone else do it. So that's another thing you can actually control. And those things are absolutely critical because those are up to you. They have nothing to do with the outside market factors, which will change day to day. And the trick is once you do those things, once you've built this right portfolio, then here's the toughest part of the entire equation, the entire process. Stop looking. Look at most once a quarter. Ooh, that's hard to do. That is hard. Yeah. Look once a quarter, rebalance at least about once a year. Put everything back in order again, which means, for example, right now, it would mean you'd be actually 
selling some of your bonds, which would make a lot of people happy, and buying some stocks if you were in a rebalanced position right now. But look out because the bonds are coming on strong. They had a good day yesterday, another good day today. This is very temporary, but they've rebounded already a bit. You're looking day to day? I've watched the prices of those, not in my portfolio, but I do watch the prices of all securities because it's my job. Oh, oh, that's right. He is an investment advisor. I forget sometimes. <laughs> I'm not just a pretty face. I so. just, well, I wasn't going to go that far. <laughs> well, I'm going to just toot my own horn then in that case. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is not a pretty face, but Maybe that has something to do with our video subscription. Just any other. Yeah, that's probably why we only get like a hundred views. But you know, we were talking about this the other day and uh, Mark Hebner, who's a friend of ours who uh, does videos for index funds, advisors, Mm -hmm. IFA. He has videos. He's had them up for, Oh, gosh, we used to help him make them. Yeah, Tom used to be ago. on them. Yeah, I was. More than yep. a decade ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's been doing them for a lot longer than we have. Yes, he has. And he only gets, you know, after a week or so, he only gets about 150 to 200 yeah. viewers. We get about 100 and some odd. So it's what I think it is. I think it's old guys doing videos. I just yeah, don't I agree. think yeah. there's much of a market for old guys doing videos. So we should get some actors to play us who are much younger and maybe even more attractive to jump in our place. The following video is based on real (laughs) people. (laughs) You think anybody wakes up in the morning and said, I can't wait to get up and play Tom Cock today. Uh, No, I don't think so. So sorry. (laughs) I just doubt it. Except Dave. (laughs) Yeah, maybe Dave. Dave. And Dave, you know who you are. You do know who you, you do. are. <laughs> Most of the video is your fault, Dave. <laughs> oh, God, we're going to go there now? Dave. <laughs> this is the Don I'm McDonald not saying limited which, employment contract. Do you know how many, you know how many oh, Daves there are in America? That's Come true. on. That's could a very be popular name. Could be but there's a lot of Dave Daves and now. Buster. Dave, a lot be. of popular Daves sitting around going, is he talking about me? Is he could, talking about me? Could be hmm. David Letterman. That's true. Could be. Yeah. Could be um, now I'm having a hard time thinking of any Daves. I just said there were a lot Dave, of them. So now you know which Dave, Dave we're is, yeah. talking about. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add to, no, to this I, advice you I just gave? I think I've just done enough for All right. right there. Would you, we, we, here's a question that's yeah, really, really timely and fits right in with our conversation. Absolutely. Oh, people, 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 people. We need to talk. Uh, And we need to talk. You can call us to do that at 855-935-TALK. Leave your questions there. Those generally get answered on the Friday podcast. When Don does his questions, boom. Oh, man. I think I got like seven or eight questions in last week. Good for you. I hope. Any any obscure phone numbers you included? I did not. (laughs) uh, And, you know, one of the problems is, I'll tell you what one of the problems is. (laughs) I, I edit a lot of these shows on Tuesdays and, um, Tuesdays I, ha- I have an acting class on Monday night and I have a great teacher, but whew, man, he runs the class rent till almost midnight last night. Is I his name on. Dave? Dave. No, just it's not that Dave. Dave's anyway, so here. this question, this question okay. though, came in at talkingrealmoney.com. Ah, yes. mm-hmm. And so for the reading of the question, I do need to doff my Wisdom Helpers. glasses. Yes, the wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom glasses. Okay. All right. Cheaters. Cheaters. This is the one. All right. You're oh my gosh, this question. You love this question. Ah, good. I thought I was doing the safe thing by investing in Vanguard's total bond fund BND. But it went down a little over five point five percent over the past year. What gives? How does a bond fund go down? Isn't the purpose of a bond fund to give you safety in exchange for lower returns? Between inflation and the drop in the fund, I lost about 10% investing in that thing over the past year. I am mad and never want anything to do with a bond again. Am I wrong? I'm going to give him the short answer. Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you are wrong. Yeah. Uh, okay, but let's go. I'm trying to find if it really I got lost 5.5%. I got BND. I got BND. Last year for 2021, mm-hmm. the total return, which includes the 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 yep. income yep. minus the, re- the the drop. So we're probably talking about a a, a a loss in the value of the portfolio of about three and a half percent. The total lo- uh, loss was a negative 1.86, including So the when dividend. you take the reduction in the value of the securities it holds, 
Mm -hmm. plus the interest, right? That's the plus yeah, side. And the interest the was about two. So maybe oh. it's closer to four for and 2021. The complaint is, well, wait a minute. I also lost to inflation. Well, right. that's a whole separate can of worms to discuss. Right. And, and, and here's the thing. You may have lost money in your bond fund, but you, if you were in a fixed income product that, I mean, a, 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 a totally safe product that provides a little teeny tiny bit of income and no potential loss of principal, you lost money to inflation. Big time. If depending on which inflation number you want to use. So yeah. Okay. So let's go back. So this all people always have a tendency to look at all uh, that part of my portfolio made a lot of money. That part lost. So I'll sell the part that lost and buy more of the stuff that made it. Mm -hmm. And they're mixed up. Uh, the bonds, as you correctly point out, should be there for, stability and will they go up and down a little bit from time to time sure it's a basket well, do this of securities. for me tom let's define stability because i think some people read stability as, as no chance down? of loss is your relationship with your loved ones perfect every single day every i mean does it ever have any variation a little bit of variation sure it does yeah but you see here's what people are used to they're used to the the heady days of the 80s oh, when you the could heady get, days of the when 80s. you could get you know double Damn. digit returns on your cds with no risk of loss you except know, banks were failing you know i was making people a lot of money back then don so no i mean here's the thing okay you know it's what it's one of tom's two <laughs> impressions no i can do uh, that's probably that's about right too yeah that's two yeah to this point uh <laughs> Here's bonds. Yes, they should be there for stability. Are they perfect all the time? No. Let's just for equivalence. The the loss you mentioned, if even if I believe the five and a half, which I do not, because mm -mm. Don just said it wasn't true. But let's just assume it did. It was five percent in a bad year. Stocks can lose how much? 30, 40, even 50%. So they're not equivalent. If you're. Ah, thank you. It's relative thank stability. Thank you. Yeah, it's relative, relative stability. stability. If you, if you want to make more money in looking back, then yes, you'd have most of your money in stocks. They have made more money. If you're not willing to accept volatility, you want more bonds. That's the, the simple trade off that it is. But not everything is going to go up year after year. Bonds have down years. They may have another down year this year. Who knows? But but the down is pretty small down. It's not a big deal. And there are a couple of things going on here. You, with a bond fund or a bond ETF like BND, which is an exchange-traded fund that is made up of, by the way, 18,000 wow. different bonds, 18,000 different bonds with an average duration of about seven years. Seven. So okay. it's a little bit long. It's inter that is an intermediate term duration because they have longer bonds and they have shorter bonds in because it's a bond index. Actually, for greater stability, I would suggest something that was a short intermediate bond fund because a short intermediate bond fund is going to have a duration more about more like four and a half to five say, years. Yeah. Okay. Four. Yeah. Which is going to mean smaller losses when bond prices fall, when interest rates rise, bond prices fall. This is what happens. But the other thing that happens is the distributions increase as the fund is buying new bonds. And that is evident in the uh, the distributions we've seen, we've seen like in uh, in June of 2021, the distribution was 13 cents, and in December of 2021, the distribution was 14 cents. So the the income starts to slightly rise as the vol the value goes down. Bond funds, even bond funds, are not meant to be short term vehicles, and they were never intended to be absolutely safe. No, you can't lose any money vehicles because if you really truly do not want to lose any money at all, then the best you can do with liquidity and see that's that remember, we've got to talk about liquidity too, because if you put it in a CD and you want to take it out before the year or two years is out, whatever that is, you are going to lose money. You're going to give back some of your interest. In other words, that's a loss. So right now the uh, high yield savings rate is I want to I just haven't updated it in a while. Sixty well, basis points, look, seventy it basis hasn't point? moved at all between fifty and sixty five uh, basis okay. points. So right about than, half a percent. Yeah, half a percent. Okay, just now to after finish inflation, the 
that you're getting killed. Uh, and just to finish the thought, because what you're saying there, I think is important, but I also want to make sure people understand it in another way. Bond funds, bond ETFs are buying new bonds at higher interest rates. So they're getting new securities in. And I think up, up until about last week, Don, the 10 year note was approaching two. So you're going to see what you're going to see is some the, the bonds that are in there mature. They're buying new ones at higher rates. That will, again, as you point out, increase distributions to some extent, and just the yield will go up as prices have gone down. They are sort of linked at the hip, if you will. So again, small decrease. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay with that. Mostly there for stability in the portfolio. Yeah, pretty much even in an off year like 2021. Thanks for your question. We appreciate it. And again, it, if if you're if this concerns you, scares you, worries you, then what you this is some this is a, a lesson everybody needs to learn. There's nothing, nothing in which you can invest and get high returns with no risk. Nothing, not one thing. No matter what people will tell you, they will lie because they know that's what you want. That is not necessarily what you. It is not not, not even at all. What you can get if you want no risk, half a percentage point before inflation, before taxes. Because remember, you also have to pay income tax on that. So, your you partner, the US government. US government. Thank you all for uh, joining us for this edition of Talking Real Money. If you have questions, you can call us with them at 855 935 Talk. You can send them in at talkingrealmoney.com. And we also offer a really, really, really cool service that many of you have taken advantage of. And I've We've never gotten a single complaint that somebody got a high pressure sales pitch or was uh, felt like they were being pushed to do something. Not one. Have we ever gotten one? No, I don't think we have. So go to vestory.com, V E S T O R Y.com, and sign up for an appointment with one of our advisors. They will help you for a while, a little while, for free for nothing. We will not manage your money for free. Bad idea. We make no money. We go broke. Uh, but if you like the way you manage money, sure. We'd love to welcome you as one of our clients. So go to vestry.com, sign up V E S T O R Y.com. Tom is calling because his glitch thing glitched out. Uh, and I wish he wouldn't call right in the middle of this, but, but I'm going to say bye. Bye. We hope you realize that the information provided on Talking Real Money is for informational, educational, and hopefully enjoyable purposes only. Providing personalized financial planning or investing advice takes time, so please consult with a really good fee-only fiduciary investment, tax, or legal advisor. We know a good one. Investing must always involve risk. In other words, you can and probably will lose money at times. Also, as much as you want it, no one can accurately and consistently predict the future, so past performance doesn't tell you a darn thing about what the future will bring. Unlike many other programs that say something similar, Talking Real Money is not trying to get you to buy or sell any financial products or securities. Instead, the program is provided as a public service by Appella Capital, a fee-only registered investment advisor. Thanks for listening and please visit TalkingRealMoney.com for more information and disclosures. That's a wrap.